back to The Average Kitchen. I can't wait to do this video today. Our second review of another Ninja air fryer. This is the eight in one digital air fry oven slash large toaster oven. Pretty new purchase for me here in my house. And let me give you a little bit of background and context. Our toaster oven died and we needed a new one. So I started doing a bunch of research, watching YouTube videos and reading reviews. And I wanted to get something that was a good quality. And when I came across this large capacity toaster oven, and when I saw that it also was a air fryer, air broiler, so on and so forth, those were kind of just bonus throw-ins. So today we're gonna review it and show you how it works. The first thing you can see about this air fryer, or sorry, this toaster oven, is it's big, big capacity. So I'm gonna just do a quick measurement here. So it is 19 inches by 14 inches, and it stands about seven and a half inches tall. So you need to have a good amount of space in order to put this somewhere. Now, normally for me, it's sitting in that corner over there, lots of space. The other feature that it offers that we do not use what it does offer is that it stands up and tucks away. So the downside for me for this is that it stands just under 15 inches tall. So you have to have some pretty high counter space above your countertop in order to tuck this away. Now, it does offer a cool feature while it's in this standing position that it's got this flip down tr crumb tray cleaner or whatever that you can do, but for us, in my house, we leave this downwards. So, I've had this for about a month, and what I can tell you is, it's very, we'll say kid to preteen to teen friendly, and we're gonna do some tests on it later in the video to show you how uh, kids can actually cook themselves in a safe manner. The biggest thing I don't like about it is how small and narrow this is. Previous toaster ovens, I could reach in, flip something or whatever. In this case, you can't. You need to basically have one of these on hand or, or a toast or a, a oven mitt, and you need to be able to slide your, your rack out in, in order to access everything. So kind of a downside in the sense that uh, it's got a small opening, but the capacity is huge. So let's plug it in and we'll turn it on. So you can see here, or maybe you can't, but air fry, air roast, air broil, bake, dehydrate, keep warm, toast, and bagel setting. The other thing that's really, really nice about this is that it's got a light inside. So you flick that button inside there, it lights it up. I like that feature, really, really slick. The other thing that's really impressive with this is how quickly it comes up to temperature on a preheat. So, I think the first thing we'll do is the reason I bought it as a toaster oven and we're gonna throw a couple slices of bread in. So I got a loaf of bread here. We're gonna throw a couple slices in and I'm gonna show you something on how the functionality of this works. So we're gonna put two pieces of, of bread. I'm gonna close that. We're gonna scroll down to toast. And what you'll see here is, I don't know if you can read that, Jamie, it says slice. So you can actually see up here, it says two slices. You then select your darkness from one, oh sorry, darkness, then you turn your dial from one to five. So let's do a three, and we're, and we're gonna start that now. So it's showing that for two slices at that darkness, it's gonna take three, hour, or three hours, three minutes and 45 seconds. So what I wanna show you is that you don't have to reach in and flip that bread, and it should toast consistently every single time. So let's take a little break, and let's come back in about three minutes and 30 seconds. Boom, it's done. One thing I'll say before I open that door is you'll see that it goes to hot mode here and you can see these like little element aspects and you can probably hear the fans going. So what the uh, Ninja Air Fryer uh, toaster oven does is it cools down itself and, it, and the fan will turn off when it, I guess, senses that it's cool enough. So we'll see here, this was no flip. So bread a little bit on the dark side, but it depends on how you like your toast, but consistent across the board between the two pieces. So now, again, for the purpose of the video, let's try what they say is the maximum capacity, uh, nine slices. So we'll reach in here, we'll start feeding these in. What I'm, what's my count at, Jamie? And I'm working across my body here. So what I want to do, and I've actually never tested this yet, 
What I want to do is to see if slice number one, say in the uh, top left hand corner here versus slice number nine in the bottom right hand corner, both uh, toast equally. So we'll slide that in and we'll close our door and we'll slide this back down to toast. And I think we'll reduce our uh, darkness. So first we'll go to slice, we'll go all the way up to nine and we'll reduce the darkness down to two. So that's showing that it's gonna take four minutes and 30 seconds. So let's take another little breather here and we'll come back and see how this looks. All right, the toast just finished, so let's open it up and have a look. Now what I would say on first glance is even though we reduced the darkness down by one, it still is probably the same darkness as this bread. But, so this is what we said was, uh, we'll call this slice number nine, which was in the bottom right hand corner. So now let's compare it to, pull this out a little bit further and not burn myself. We'll compare it to what I called slice number one, which was the furthest away from it. So I would say fairly consistent across the board for all of these slices. So I would say as far as the toaster goes, very consistent. So a couple other things I want to mention, it came with these, it came with two baskets, racks for different purposes. So this basket, we're gonna do fries in it eventually and some wings. And then it comes with this really good size and maybe I'll grab my uh, trusty tape measure again. This really good size cookie sheet that is 13 inches by 13 inches. So as far as toaster ovens go, that's a pretty good size because normally you're looking at, you know, a small little uh, cookie sheet. I did want to also say that we are not affiliated in any way with Ninja. This is something that I purchased for my house. I just happen to like their products and we're doing a review on it. The other thing I want to mention was the flip up feature, even though it doesn't really benefit me and it's not the reason I bought it. If somebody lives in a small apartment with minimal counter space and minimum storage, or maybe they're in a university dorm and they don't have a lot of room, I really think that this would be a really good feature for you to be able to flip that up and out of the way. For me, I don't need it because I have that big space that I mentioned over there. That's kind of a dead space, wasted space anyway, so it just sits there perfectly. So the next test I wanna do is something that would mimic maybe your kid's coming home from school or you come home from the bar and you're inebriated and you need something salty uh, as a small plate of nachos. So you'll see here, I threw down some aluminum foil, a couple handful of nacho chips, and I'm just gonna throw on some grated cheese. Now we're not making these like super duper best nachos ever, it's just for the purpose of trying out this uh, toaster oven to see how it does with nachos. I have not done nachos in it yet, but um, I think we'll give it a try. Now, I do have a question for uh, the viewers is, are you a salsa after or salsa on type person? Myself, I put the salsa on the side because I don't want to lose the crunch on my nacho chips. So leave a comment in the uh, video and let me know, are you a salsa on or salsa off kind of person? So we're gonna slide this in here and then we're going to close our door and we're gonna flip this to, I think, air bake. You'll see here it uh, cooks at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty warm. So we'll give that a start. One thing, uh, well, it already was warmed up, but one thing I did notice, and I think I mentioned it before is uh, it heats up extremely quickly. So I don't think it's gonna take the 20 minutes and you'll see that the 20 minute countdown will not start until the toaster oven air fryer is at its desired temperature, which is good for consistency on your cooks. When you uh, recognize that, you know, nachos takes eight minutes, it's not gonna throw off your timings. So we'll wait a few minutes for that to get to temperature and then we'll keep an eye on these uh, because obviously we don't wanna overcook them. Can you set the time? Great question, Jamie. Yes, you can. So you hit the slice button and you can set that timer. Let's set it for eight minutes and it's still preheating. And you can change the actual temperature as well by hitting the darkness button and you can go up or down. So maximum 450, <whistles> lowest 250. So let's try 400. So it's at temperature. So you'll see the temperature just, or the uh, timer just started going down. So you'll see at the timer, five minutes and 15, 13 seconds left. So it's been three minutes, three minutes for these nachos. Let's uh, pull them out and have a look. So I think they look pretty good 
for a three minute nacho platter. So let's, uh, without burning my face off, let's see if we can try one here. Woo! Maybe I should wait 30 seconds. All right, so you can see, and Jamie just mentioned here, you wouldn't want to leave them in much longer. You can see some of them are definitely browning. So I've got a little bit of, just a little bit of salsa on the side here. So I'm just gonna give these a try. So still super crunchy. You can see the cheese is melted pretty evenly of where I distribute it. For an after school snack or for an after bar snack in three minutes, I'm pretty impressed. So the next thing I'm gonna try is frozen French fries. So the Ninja actually came with this sort of cheat sheet book that sort of break, breaks everything down for you. So when it looks at frozen food, it says fries at 390 for 28 to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna throw in, again, it's just for the purpose of doing a demo here, so we're not making a meal, but I'll throw in a, a handful or two of uh, french fries, and you'll see that I put the black uh, tray cookie sheet uh, in first, because I want it to catch anything that it's gonna, uh, may fall, and then we're gonna slide all of this in together. Again, with the narrowness, you can see it's, it, there's not a lot of extra room there, um, but we should be good to go. So we now flick it over to air fry and we'll reduce our temperature down to 390 as they suggested. Sorry, stand by, air fry, 390. We'll set our timer to, we'll say 28 minutes and we'll keep an eye on them. And we'll let that preheat and we'll see where it takes us. So according to the book, it says that you should rotate the uh, wire rack, 180 degrees, halfway through the cook. So we're already noticing that the fries are starting to brown up and it's only been 14 minutes. So we're gonna pull these out, maybe give them a little shake and give them a twist. I'm trying to do everything with my left hand here. So they're definitely not done, but they're, nef they're not far off. So I would say maybe it's just given the volume that we have because we don't have a lot of fries here. They're definitely not gonna take the 28 minutes. So it's been, um, 14 minutes so far, I believe. 12 minutes, sorry, my math isn't that good. So we'll close that door and then we'll keep checking it and we'll come back. So it's been 18 minutes. I don't wanna pull these out premature. However, I also don't want them to overcook. Let's have a look. Well, I guess all we can do is try one. Not done. Back in they go. 23 minutes into the cook. Let's check them again. So right off the pop, I can see that they're not overly consistent. Like this one's pretty dark, but let me grab one that's not as dark. So definitely hot, definitely good, but I would say a couple minutes away on that. But then again, these ones aren't. So I'm gonna stop the cook here. So fries, not really consistent. So next thing I'm gonna try, my kid's favorite, pogos, or as our American friends call them, corn dogs. Now I've never done corn dogs slash pogos in the air fryer before, so this is gonna be a bit of a guess, but I'm gonna use the uh, fries sort of experiment as uh, a measuring stick. Now you'll see they're gonna roll around a little bit on me, but that shouldn't matter. So I'll throw those in and let's set the timer for, we'll say 10 minutes to start. All right, it's been seven minutes and by looking at these, because I did adjust them right around the uh, four minute mark. But looking at these, they pretty much look done to me. So obviously everybody's uh, interpretation of crispiness is different, but you could see on the bottom end of these, they're pretty, pretty done. So we'll give these a few seconds to cool off and we'll give them a try. All right, so I brought in a couple taste testers, fresh back from school. So give them a try guys. Super good. Super good. Awesome. So now we're going to try a couple mini frozen pizzas that we picked up at the grocery store here. So according to the book, it shows uh, frozen pizzas should be on the bake setting. So these look like um, frozen pizzas. That would be great for kids or again, those uh, late night bar uh, returns from home. So I'm going to give a little spray here just to avoid any stickage. And we'll do pizza number one and pizza number two. Very generous on the pepperoni. Three slices on this, four on that one. So we're gonna throw this into on top of the wire rack. And I think we'll set it for 20 minutes to start 
and we'll keep an eye on it. All right, so just under a minute left on this uh, pizza cook. And by the looks of it, it looks done to me. So let's pull it out here. So it looks pretty epic. I would say I was pretty impressed. Um, not that I'm a big proponent of frozen mini pizzas, but the crust actually rose and it looks pretty decent. So I think I'll give that um, a minute or two to rest and let's cut it up and try one. All right, still probably pretty hot, but I threw one on the cutting board here. So let's, uh, let's check. So it's definitely not like crispy top, but the bottom, oh, extra pepperoni. The bottom actually, ugh, fail. The bottom actually looks pretty good for a frozen pizza. Now I'm reluctant to try a bite because I don't want to burn my face off. Bar stool style. One bite, everybody knows the rules. Yep, burnt myself. So the texture's good. Probably burnt my lip, but so there's definitely some crisp on the bottom, which is really kind of impressive. So yeah, this would be a really good late night snack. All right, last thing we're gonna try is these crisp and crunchy, mild Southern style chicken wings. I waited to the end to use to do these because they make a big mess. So first things first, now I put some uh, aluminum foil down on the tray so that um, any drippings or any fat that drips, drips into that so it doesn't make a huge mess. We'll see how these go. So they're pretty battery, if that's a word. This we're gonna slide on here and then we're gonna put our wings over top. Again, I'm not left-handed, there we go. So we're gonna slide that all in and we're gonna turn that to air fry and let's set it for, it's on roast. Let's set it for say 30 minutes and we'll check it halfway through. We'll rotate that. I'll probably turn those wings and we'll see how, uh, how they're looking. So we're just over halfway through the cook here. So I think what we'll do is uh, pull these out a little bit. So they definitely already look quite crispy. So I would say they're looking quite good. And you can definitely hear the sizzle, so I'm glad I put that tin foil down, or uh, aluminum foil. We had set it for a half an hour, I believe. We've done so many cook times today, I, I'm starting to forget, but I believe we set it for a half an hour. So we got about 13 minutes left, so we'll let that finish off, and we'll come back and check them. So looking at these wings, it's been just uh, under 25 minutes. I'm gonna say they're done, and I'm gonna uh, pull them out. So overall, pretty quick cook time, I think, on those wings. You can see that they look super crispy, very, very well done. Yeah, I think they look really nice. So in the meantime, while we're waiting for these to cool so we don't have another pizza incident where I drop pepperoni off my face, I just wanted to do a little bit of a recap on this piece of equipment, this piece of kitchen equipment. So what tests did we do? We did the toast test. Very impressed, nine slices of bread all at once, very consistently toasted. We did the fries, not that impressed. The fries were inconsistent. Uh, yeah, they're different shapes and sizes, I guess, but I wasn't really impressed with the cook on the fries. Nachos in four minutes or th three minutes, extremely impressed. That actually turned out extremely well. Uh, pogos, I mean, you saw my kids were pretty impressed with those pizzas. Pleasantly surprised how the undercarriage got cooked. The bottom of that, those mini pizzas were cr quite crisp and I was really impressed. The wings, they look good. We'll come back in a minute or so so that I can try them. But again, overall, if you are, uh, if you have teenagers or preteens that wanna get into cooking or they need to make a meal after school because they gotta go to a hockey game or they got a sporting event, pretty safe to use. Obviously you have to use an oven mitt uh, to open and pull out the rack. The flip up, flip up feature, uh, not for me, but could be for a lot of people if you're, if you're short on counter space. Again, my only, the biggest knock I have on this is just how narrow of an opening this is. And for a guy who's got big hands like I do, um, and sometimes a little clumsy, you gotta be careful that you don't burn yourself because that opening is not that big. And Jamie had made a, a comment off camera when we did the nachos, and we didn't even have that big of a plate of nachos there, 
uh, the clearance from the top of the nachos and the cheese to the top of the uh, toaster oven air fryer here really wasn't that much. So you gotta keep that in mind when you're building something up that you can't be very high because there's not a lot of space. All right, I'm gonna risk it. Now you can see, I don't know if you can see, really crispy. Now, these are obviously a store-bought store -bought frozen wings that pr pronounce or not pronounce, profound? No, they say that they're super crispy. So anyway, I'm gonna give it a dip to get them with this little uh, maple barbecue sauce. So I'm gonna give that a try and try not to burn my face off. So hot, but the texture is really nice. So that's our video, that's a review of this really handy air fryer, toaster, dehydrator, which I'll never use, air broiler, eight in one. Hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and we'll see you on the next one.